Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to use the Pocky API to build a Pokédex. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is I have my terminal open and I'm going to CD into my desktop and then inside my desktop I have a folder that is called projects and then inside projects I'm going to create my Next.js application. So I'm going to say npx create dash next dash app at latest and I'm going to call it Pokédex dash Next.js and then I want to install Tailwind, so dash dash Tailwind, and then dash dash ES lint as well. So let's say enter, and then let's go through the questions that it's going to ask. So we don't want to use TypeScript, we don't want the source directory, we want the app router, and the default alias can remain as it is. And then let this run, and then once it finishes, we are going to continue. And there we go. So let's go ahead and say cd into Pokédex, Pokédex dash next.js and then let's open up an instance of vs code by saying code dot and there we go so we have our application living in the app and then the public folder has our images which we are really not even going to use so what i want to do is control j to open up our integrated terminal and then inside our terminal i want to go ahead and install shard cn which is a ui component library so i'm going to say npx shard cn dash ui at latest init which is going to initialize the library and it's going to create a components.json file as well as a components folder so i want to use the default style so default and then the color i want to use is neutral and then i'm going to say yes for css variables even though we're not going to use it and then this requires tailwind css so it's going to configure or rather modify the tailwind config file that we have by default as you can see it's already modified so what that is going to do is it's going to change up the the default application that we're going to see when we run our application okay that is finished now from shard cn i want to go ahead and install a component that is called a card and then another component that is called a button so i'm going to say npx shard cn dash ui at latest add card and then i also want to add the button now as those two install you can see that you have a components.json file which is the, just the JSON configuration for Shard CN. And then we also have a components folder, which has a UI folder inside. And then the UI folder has every component that we are getting from Shard CN. As you can see, we have the button and then we have the card. And then the good thing about this is that you can configure them or rather you can modify them. You can start them out however you want. If you are familiar with Tailwind CSS, all you need to do is just go ahead and change the classes inside here. And it's going to update so that it matches the theme of your website so it's very very handy now let's say Control j once again to open up our terminal and then let's say npm run dev and this is going to spin up our dev server on localhost 3000 so let me open this up because i closed my browser and there we go so i'm on localhost 3000 and you can see that the default page i have dark mode enabled so i should be seeing the dark mode of the website but I don't see it because we have modified the Tailwind config file when we installed Shard CN. So this is the default homepage that we get. And I want to modify a few things and I'm seeing our font is not applying. It should be applying the inter font. Okay, it failed to download right there. Okay. So, I mean, we can work without it. It doesn't really matter all that much. So what I'm going to do now is inside my app folder, I'm going to go inside my page.js and then I'm just going to say control A to select everything. And then I'm going to say export default function home. And then inside here, I'm going to return an H1 that says Pokédex. Save that. And now this should reload and we should see Pokédex on the website. Now, I don't want to return an H1 inside here. So I'm just going to return a div first of all. And then inside this div, I'm going to return an article. And then inside this article, I'm going to have my H1 that says Pokédex. And then below this H1, you can have a description if you want, but I just want to have some lorem ipsum. So I'm going to say lorem 20 and save that. And we should have that on the screen. So let's style this out. Let's go inside the H1, give this a class name of text-3xl. And then for large screens, text-4xl. Save that. And you know what? I've just remembered something. I want to go ahead and install a plugin a prettier plugin which is going to help us to format the tailwind css classes so let me just remember prettier I can't remember the this one right here let's just open this up 
and i'm going to leave this in the description but if you go into github if you go into the tailwind labs which is the official uh, tailwind css repository so tailwind labs forward slash prettier plugin tailwind css that is the name of the repository if you just scroll down all you need to do is install this so copy this open up our terminal here let's add a new terminal and then let's paste that in and then as that is installing we need to copy this and this needs to be in the root of our workspace so make sure that you're not in any folder but you're in the root you can just double click which is going to create a new file and then the file is called dot prettier prettier rc and then just paste that in and then remove this comment otherwise you're going to get an error so remove the comment save that and then now what this will do is if i add a class like rounded here if i save it then it's going to format the classes according to the BEM convention that we have from CSS. So that is much, much better as you can see. Now I want the text here to also have a font bold. And then inside the article, I'm going to give it a class name here of padding on the Y of 20. And then on the div, I'm going to give it a class name of container, container, which means it's not going to touch the edges of the screens. And then I'm going to say, mx auto which is going to center the content and then on the paragraph i'm going to give it a class name here of text neutral dash 600 and leading dash 6 to increase the line height and then on the h1 i'm going to say text neutral dash 800 save that let's see what we have and we have that i need this text to be centered so right on the article text dash center text center save that okay and then i don't want that to to go all the way to the end so i can add a max width here so i can say max width dash large and mx auto max width there we go and it's going to limit that but it only applies it on the article and not on the other elements that we're going to have now once we do that then i want to go ahead and create another div inside here and then this div is going to be housing the, the data that we're going to be getting from the Pocky API. And so if I navigate into pokyapi.co, then this is the website that we're going to be using. And the get request that we're going to be sending is forward slash Pokemon so that we can get a bunch of them. So let me just see this, it should be this one. Open this in a new tab, go to Google for this. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Close this ad. Copy that paste it here and then say forward slash uh what was it pokemon there we go and once we do that you can see that we get a bunch of results now the results are limited to 20 i think they should be limited to 20 but if you want to get more as you can see there are 20 items because arrays are zero based if you want to get more you can attach a question mark limit and set this to maybe a thousand for example and then now you should get a thousand of them as you can see now let me go ahead and copy this and then let's jump back into our react application or the, into our next js application and then let's begin to fetch our data so because this is server side what we can do is we can say async function get pokemon and then we're going to say const res is equal to oh my god is equal to await fetch and then we are fetching from the API like so. And I'm getting a thousand uh, on purpose, by the way. This is just on purpose. You don't have to do this. And you probably don't want to do this because a thousand of them is quite large. And then we're going to say if res, if no res dot okay, meaning if there's an error, then simply throw new error. And then we're going to say failed to fetch at line two so that we know that this is where the error is occurring on line two. And then I'm going to say below this, we're going to say return res.json. And this is just how they recommend to use the fetch API when you're using the server side rendering, which is server side rendering by default in Next.js. So we need to transform this into an asynchronous function or the, an asynchronous component. And then I'm going to say const, const Pokemon, which is a variable name, is equal to await get Pokemon. I can type get Pokemon. So this is waiting for this function to run before it can populate the Pokemon. So if I go ahead and say console log Pokemon, then what we should see in our console 
in our terminal is the Pokemon and you can see it shows only some of it because there are quite many and then it says 900 more items. So this looks like a good place to begin. So what you need to do is simply get the name and then the URL of that particular Pokemon. And you know what, we don't even need the URL, we just want the name. So below this div or the inside this div, I'm going to create an article here. And now we need to map over them. So let me say Pokemon, Pokemon.map because what we're getting back from the API is actually a results array. So results is an array as you can see right there. Now this is Firefox showing JSON by, by default. I've not configured any extensions here. So I'm just using Firefox. So what I'm going to do is Pokemon.map and then I'm going to say that for every, let me call it Pokey. Then I'm going to say return here a card and card is coming from add component slash UI slash card, which is what we installed when we installed Shard CN. So make sure that you import it on top. So card, this is going to have a key of Pokey dot name because there are no two Pokemon that share names or at least I don't think so. And then inside here, we're going to have a card header and then just say enter to import it. Whenever it gives you like that kind of option, simply say enter and it's going to auto import it for you on top. So card header and then inside the card header, I'm going to have the card title like so. And this is going to render the pokey dot name. Now, when I save that, we can go back inside the application and we're going to see pokemon.map is not a function. Oh, you know what? Pokemon.results. Pokemon.results.map because that's what we want. We want the results. Save that and there we go. So you can see we have the name and then we have this kind of styling that is applied by default. That is the card element that is coming from Shard CN. Now, I want this to display as three grids. So let's style it out. Inside this div, give this a class name and say grid with a gap of eight. And then I'm going to say that for medium screens, then the grid columns are going to be two. For large screens, then the grid columns are going to be three. Save that. And there we go. So we have that. And then let's make the names capitalized. So inside the card title, we can simply give it a class name here and then say capitalize. Save that. And it's going to capitalize the first letter of every word. So that looks quite okay. And you can see that we are getting a thousand of them, right? Now, I want to mention this. Okay, let's add padding on the bottom. Let's add padding on the bottom should be on the container. Oops. Padding bottom 20. So I wanted to say this. Because what we're getting back from the API by default here is just simply the names of the Pokemon, which is just simply text. It's okay to fetch a thousand of them because as you can see, it loaded in quite fast, right? But if you were to go ahead and get the images as well, then you don't want to show a thousand images by default. So you probably want to limit the API request here maybe to about 500 or something. But because we're only showing the text here on the home page, then it's okay to just have it like this. So now what we need to do next is we need to build the internal page for every Pokemon so that when you click on one here, then it's automatically going to take us into the internal page of that particular Pokemon. So what we need to do is inside our app.js, or sorry, inside our app folder, I'm going to create a new folder here. And this one is going to be inside my square brackets because it's going to be a dynamic page. And I'm just going to say Pokemon. I'm going to call it Pokemon. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. Now, if I say RFC inside here, it's going to generate a React function component for me. And then now, how do we link this page from our homepage? Well, we simply need to transform this card into a link. So cut it out and then render out a link component, which is coming from next link. Make sure that it's from next link, not from Lucid React. And Lucid React was installed when we installed Shard CN. In case you're wondering where it comes from. So just make sure that you use this second one so that it imports it from next link and then close this out and then paste in your card. And then now, because the card is no longer the first element, we need to cut out the key from there and place it inside the link. Now, if we go ahead and save that, then we're going to get an error because it doesn't have an href attribute. Like that. So inside the link, we can pass in an href here. And we're going to say that because we want this to be dynamic, so I'm going to place it inside my curly brackets. And then I'm going to say, backticks and then dollar sign curly brackets and then i want this to go into forward slash and not 
I'm doing that wrongly. It should be forward slash and then dollar sign curly brackets and then pokey dot name. Now, how do I know this? Because if you check the API, zoom out. If you check the API, you can search for a Pokemon by its name right there. And if you go ahead and send this request, which is actually this one that is returned from here, you can see that you actually get the particular details of that Pokemon. And so that's how I know that if I go into the forward slash name, then it's going to be sending a get request to the API and then fetching data for only that particular Pokemon. So I'm going to save that. And remember that this is actually linked to the forward slash Pokemon page that we've just created right inside here. Because the way that routing works in Next.js is that this is registered as a dynamic page. So if we test this out, look at the bottom left. See the link that is created localhost 3000 forward slash and then the name of the Pokemon. If I hover over another one, then it shows me particular name of that Pokemon over another one and so on and so forth. So that is looking nice. Now, if I click on one of them, then what we should see is page. So click on this and then it's going to load in and we see page right there. And then of course the link right here is updated. So what you need to do is just build out this internal page. So I'm going to jump inside my Pokemon here and then Next.js provides us with something very nifty. We can extract params from here, params. Now, when you extract params, if I go ahead and console log params, what we should see is the name of the Pokemon right here, okay? Now, let me remove the console log here, remove that one, and then let's try it on another one. Let's try this one. And in our console, we should see this right there. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm looking at the console log inside my terminal here, it's because Next.js is server rendered by default. So the console logs, any console logs that we do are going to show up inside our terminal, our integrated terminal, because the browser is client side and you can't see console logs of the server on the client. So let's build out this internal page. Let's go ahead and say this. We need to get, we need to get this link. And you know what? We can just copy this entire thing so that we don't have to type it out again. So copy and then just paste it on top. And then we need to change this part. And this part needs to go into the dollar sign params dot Pokemon. So you want the Pokemon because we're getting back the object here. So params dot Pokemon. But as you can see right here, if we were to run this and we need to change this into backtick so that our variable registered, if we were to run this, then we would get an error. Okay, so let me just go ahead and show you. If we were to extract this, change this into an asynchronous function, and then let me say const Pokemon, let me call this single Pokemon is equal to await get Pokemon. If we were to run that, save that, then look at what happens on the screen. It says params is not defined because we are fetching data outside of the declaration of the component. So we need to transform this into a client component so that we can use this inside the client side. So the way we do that is simply on the top of the file, simply declare use client inside a string like so. And then now we need to grab this from here, cut it out, and we can move the console log, we can paste that in. And then let's see, we need to transform this because we can no longer use this. So we need to say const is equal to await that, and then const data is equal to await res.json, and then set Pokemon, set Pokemon, data into the data that we get back. Now this, we can remove, we can remove this. Now this is supposed to be declared in our use state. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say const, const Pokemon data and set Pokemon data is equal to use state. And then just say enter to import it. And then by default, this is just going to be an empty array. And then we need to call our use effect. So use effect, enter to import it from react add in our callback function and an empty dependency array and then we're going to call our function so get pokemon like so and then now this uh, does not need to be asynchronous so remove it and then remove this declaration as well and then let's see we need the use effect to rerun every time that the params dot pokemon changes so every time that the params changes so params is going to be our 
dependency array. Let's see, let's save that. Let's see what I have on the screen. It should now say nothing, okay. But if I go ahead and say inside here, params.pokemon, then we should see the name of the Pokemon right there. And if I go back into another one, then we should see the name of the Pokemon. Now, because this is now client side, then I can say inspect inside here, which is going to show us our console, which is quite small. Now I have forgotten to console log this. So let me console log the data. And what we should see is that we get an object with quite a few things as you can see. Okay, now I don't want to do this from the inside here because this is quite small. So let me do the following. I can just go ahead and say Pokemon forward slash limit for forward slash Pokemon forward slash and this one. Okay, even that one is okay because you can search for a Pokemon by its name or by its index in the Pokedex. So you, you can see that we get an abilities array, we get da da da, we get quite a bunch of things. Okay, so let's begin to get the data that we want. First of all, we want the name. And once we get the name, we need the image, which should be inside the sprites. So we need the image. We don't need, we don't want this one. I want the front default. The front default, that should be the correct one. The front default. And then we're also going to get the stats. We want to display the stats in a chart. So what we're going to do is this. We don't want to display the params here. So we're going to create a div and then inside this div, we're going to have two articles. And then this first article is going to show an H1 that shows the Pokemon data. What did I write here? Pokemon. So we're going to display the Pokemon. Oh my God. Pokemon data dot name, which is going to show the name of that particular Pokemon. There we go. And then below this Pokemon data, we're going to have an image component from Next.js. So just make sure that you import it. So import image from next image. And then the source for this is going to say Pokemon data dot sprites because the sprites is right inside here. I know sprites is an array. No, sprites is an object. So you can just use dot notation dot sprites dot front default dot front underscore default. Is that correct? Front underscore default. That should be the, the image. And then the, for the alt attribute, in case the image fails to load, I just want to say Pokemon data dot name. So it just shows the name of the Pokemon. And then I'm going to give this a width of about, let's say 1920 and a height of 1080. Save that. Let's see what we have on the screen. We should have the image of that particular Pokemon. So Pokemon data dot sprites is undefined. Why is it undefined? Oops, I did not mean to do that. Now we can close this. We don't need that page. So Pokemon data dot sprites is undefined. Why is it undefined? Let's open up our console here. Let me console log the data dot sprites to see what we're getting back in our console. So it says what? Let's see. Sprites is undefined. Let's see, Pokemon data, console of the data. What are we getting back? That is the top. Okay, reload this page, reload this page. Oh, you know what? It's, it's getting this. So let's comment that out first of all. And then let's see, it's going to reload. So we get the data. Okay. So we get back an object by default. And the sprites is also an object. So I would think that we'd be able to get the sprites here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. If I console log the data.name, then we should only get back the name of that particular Pokemon there. So that means that if we console log the sprites, then we should also be getting back the object, right? Okay, so we get back the object right there. And then inside the object, I want to get back the 
front default so dot front default dot oops there dot front underscore default should now give us the link to the default image okay so it gives us the link here but it was not registering here let's enable it let's try it out so sprites dot front underscore default save that and we get back an error okay so let's go ahead and check if that exists so it probably doesn't exist for everything so let's say that when the pokemon data dot sprites sprites exists so when it evaluates to true then we want to show our image let's test it out so we have okay so we're getting somewhere so it says this is not defined in our next config js so let's go inside our next config js here we need to define the images and then we need to go ahead and pass in uh, how do you do it images and then remote patterns and then pass in the object here that is called protocol set it to https and then we need to pass in the host name in this case is called raw.github users content and paste it inside here save that and next just should automatically reload or rather restart the server so we don't have to and then once it reloads okay it's done so once it reloads then we should now be able to see our images let's check it and there we go oh this image is uh ha. this image doesn't look good it's too blurry let's let's test this out with front shiny hmm let's test it out with front shiny we can close that page front underscore shiny save that why does this image look so bad is it because I have uh, let's reduce this let's use 400 by 400 perhaps that will reduce just a bit <laughs> okay still looks still looks uh, oh my god doesn't look all that nice let's see is there a way that we can get other images official artwork oh no this is going to give us an issue because this is going to register as a minus so official artwork front shiny home let's go inside this other other is an object so let's go inside other and then let's get the home and then let's get the front default let's see if that is going to work so this is no longer dot sprite this is dot home or rather dot dot other and then this should now say dot other dot home because we're going inside the other and then home and then front dot front underscore default and then we can remove this console log we no longer need it save that and then let's see reload and nothing or that this one doesn't have the 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 image there let's see let's check this one we should now get okay nothing is loading nothing is loading let's check our console nothing is loading let's change this into front shiny i just need an image to show up okay okay i did not expect this day to go like that you can see that the image is showing up right the image is showing up but hmm, we're getting a few errors we're getting a few errors okay let's let's say console log the data dot other dot home let's see what we get back inside here okay data dot other is undefined wait how do we do it mm. oh it's inside the sprites other is inside the sprites yes 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 so this should this should still say sprites <laughs> and this this should now say sprites 
dot other dot home dot font shiny let's see and we get back two errors data dot other is undefined this one remove that one save that and then reload and there we go finally oh my god so we get back the image of that particular pokemon now let's style this out give this a class name and let's say text dash for xl and then font bold and then capitalize capitalize for the text save that let's see okay and then inside this div let's give it a class name of padding y of 20 padding x of 6 give it a class of container and then mx auto save that it's going to limit it fantastic and then below below this image i want to go ahead and render the the type is it the type it should be the type type zero and then the type is grass and then this first one is going to have a type of poison so types is an array yes types is an array and then types is an array that we get back we are going to be getting back the type and then the slot so what i'm going to do is below this image i'm going to have a ul and then inside this ul i'm going to say pokemon pokemon data dot is it types dot types not styles dot types dot map and then for every t that we get back i don't want to call it type because type is already inside here it's also an object so for every t that we get back i also want to get back the index which is going to act as our unique key and then i'm going to say inside here we want to return a list item and then this list item is going to be a button component which we installed so when you see this simply just say enter and it's going to auto import it for you on top so a button here and then this button is going to say t dot type because we're getting back the the singular object which is called a t and then the object has a type and then the type has a name so t dot type dot name and then here the unique key is going to be the index save that and we should see something on the screen pokemon data dot types is undefined pokemon data dot types are there others that don't have types okay we can just add a check here on this ul and say that when pokemon data dot types is true then you can just run out the ul let's check it there we go so we have grass poison but then i don't want this default button style so i can change up the variant here and i can set the variant into ghost and that should make it like a bit better looking probably not the best i want outline not ghost outline outline should be much more visible and where am i getting this from if you go ahead into the components and then the button.jsx the variants are all inside here so the, the default is this one by default and then destructive is red the outline is that one secondary is white in color ghost shows as as you saw it and then link just makes it behave like a link and then of course by the way if you wanted to add other variants so if you wanted to add something like danger you can simply go ahead and add in classes here so bg red dash 500 red not red oh bg red 500 and then if i go ahead and change this into danger which is what i've just created then it's going to show up as your variant so very much customizable i want this to be outline and then i don't want this danger variant so just remove it okay now let's style out the ul inside here give this a class name class name of flex flex wrap gap for items center and justify justify dash start save that and we're going to have that okay looking nice and then let's separate out this from the top so let's give it a margin top margin top of eight and there we go looking fantastic now what i want to do next is i want to go ahead and display a chart of their stats on the right now if i go back and go into another pokemon so let me say this then we should see the pokemon loading with the name and the image load in please let's open up our console something is wrong something is wrong 
Okay, nothing is wrong. Reload that. Why isn't it loading in? So network error. I'm getting a network error. Am I connected? I mean, I am. But it's not showing up. Why am I getting all these issues? You know what? Let's just deal with the one that is working. And then I'm going to figure out my network, my network issues later. So for our chat, we need to go ahead and install chat.js and react chat.js. So back inside our terminal, let's say control J. Let's go into inside our second terminal. And then let me say npm. Why is my terminal? So npm install chat.js and then react dash chat dash js. Uh, wait a minute. That's not that's not the way to do it. Uh, that's not the way to do it. Chat.js. This is chat.js. I want react chat.js. React chat.js, this one. Or oh, chat.js dash two. That is the way. Okay. So npm install chat.js and react chat.js dash two. That is the way to do it. Okay, so I'm getting an issue with my internet because as you can see, it's not even installing my dependencies. So I probably need to just wait a moment. Okay, it didn't install them. Okay. Okay. So that therefore means that if we go back into the application, what is this error? Network error. Okay, that was a network error. If I go back inside the application, we can search for another one and it shows. Okay. So it was just a, net, a network issue. Looking nice, nice, nice. Okay. Now let's begin to implement chart.js. Now chart.js is going to be inside this second article. So what I want to do is just render out a component here called chart. And I'm going to create that component. So inside the components folder that was created for us when we install charts here, I'm going to go inside this components folder, create a new file called chart.js not to be confused with the actual library. So RFC and then change this into a capital C chart. And then we can now go ahead and render this out. So components chart, save that. And we should now see chart right there. And then what we need to do is now style this out. So this article and this article, we need this to be a grid. And for large screens, then the grid columns are going to be two with a gap of eight. Save that. And the chat should now come here and then the name is here okay fantastic now let's build out this chart let's hard code it first of all because we just need it to show up where is it where is it where's the demo oh the demo is not here the demo should be samples let's see chart samples no budgets i want a horizontal budget not that one i want the start okay I've forgotten how to how to do this thing. <laughs> Let's go back home. Let's say installation. Installation is that one which I've just done. And then we need the chat types. Yes. And then we want the bar chat. So you want this one right here. And this is the setup. So I want to copy the setup. So just copy this entire thing. Not this doesn't have a copy button. Okay, so copy. And then inside our chat.js. We need this to be a client component. So use client and then just simply paste in what we copied, but we don't have access to this. So remove it. And then what we should see now on the screen is if I save that and not, it's still not going to show up because we need to render out our chat. So inside this div, so we are going to render out a bar chart. So we're going to render out a bar chart. And then the butcher takes in a prop that is called data and we're going to pass in the data that we have just copied. Now, if I save this our application is going to break because it needs a few things before the butcher is can be displayed properly. So first of all, we need the labels and labels here. See how is it? It is initialized. We don't want that, but this is going to be coming from an, our API. So let's just go ahead and register out our butcher to begin with. So let's say import bar from react chat.js2 and then we need to import a few things from chat.js so we need to import chart as chart.js we need to import the category scale we need to import the linear scale we need the bar element 
we need the title title we need the tooltip we need the legend and this is coming from chart.js and then once we import them then we need to register so chart.js.register and then we need to go ahead and register the category scale the linear scale we need the bar element we need the title the tooltip tooltip and the legend now for our labels what i can do is this i can say that because i know the example is using the months of the year so i can say that the label for the first one is going to be january january and then you know what this should actually be an array so january uh i was about to say second day <laughs> february march april may and june and july being the seventh month when i save that then our chart should now show up and there we go so we have my first data set which is the label of the 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 chart and then the labels here are going to be the ones on the bottom so january february march april may june july and then these numbers are the ones that are displayed inside the data so we need to make this dynamic to the api so what we're going to do is the following we need our chart component first of all to have access to the pokemon data so i'm going to pass in the pokemon data as a prop so pokemon data is equal to pokemon data and then inside my chart js i can destructure pokemon data so pokemon data and then now what i can do inside here is instead of just displaying january i can go ahead and display my backticks inside here because it needs to be a string and then my dollar sign curly brackets and then i'm going to say pokemon data and then inside here i want to go ahead and get the stats now the stats are coming from right here now stats is an array as well as you can see so i can use array notation to get the elements so if i get the zero element then i'm getting the first element of the array so i can say dot stats and then zero and then if i expand this meaning i'm getting the first element here if i expand it then i can get the start which is now an object so if i expand the start i can get the name of that start which in this case is hp so i can say dot starts zero and then dot start dot name now if i save that now it's no longer going to be showing january it's going to be showing hp now i want to do this very same thing for the rest of them so copy and then just remove this paste it one two three four because i think there are five of them so this should now stay one two three and four and when i save that then it's going to show that so hp attack defense special attack and special defense and then i want this to be uppercase so if i say dot two uppercase here then it should do or you know what uppercase has is a method so <laughs> call it dot hp and then just copy the two uppercase here copy it and paste it here and paste it here and paste it here and paste it here and it's going to transform all that to uppercase fantastic now if i go back and we need a back button i've just realized if i go back and let's go into another pokemon here then what you'll see is stats is undefined stats is undefined why do we get that why do we get that pokemon data dot stats not let me let me do this let me disable that so that we get a different error to get back okay that which is blank then when i enable it it's going to show up <laughs> uh okay let me just go ahead and fix the the chat first of all so what i wanted to explain is that if i go into a different pokemon then it's going to have different stats for this so we need to change this up we don't want it to be the same thing so we changed it up inside our data so in, instead of hard coding this then we need to hard code the let me see it should be the the base stat so right here so the stats zero has a base stat of 45 here and then the stats one has a base stat of 49 and so on and so forth so we need to go ahead and just display the base stat so for the first one here i should be saying something like pokemon pokemon data dot stats and i want to get the the file the stats zero which is the first one dot 
and it should be what dot base underscore start and this should be inside my curly brackets or that my backticks so place a backtick there place a backtick there and then dollar sign and then save that and then it should now refresh so this one is 60 by default and then let's just copy this and remove these accounts paste that in paste that in again paste it in again and then for the fifth time now when you save that then it should be all level meaning now we need changes into the one two three and four so that it matches up with what you have on top so save that so when i save that then we should see okay there we go so it has reloaded with the new data now let's add a back button so right on top of the bar graph i'm going to have a button here which is coming from ui button and then i'm going to give it a prop called as child so that the properties that it has can be passed down to the link which you want to add inside here so link href is going to be going back into the forward slash and then i'm going to say ampersand left arrow so l a r r and then i'm going to say back so save that and we should have the back button what was that error stats is undefined oh i've not fixed that so stats is undefined why is it undefined pokemon data that stats is undefined and by the way the background color here and the border color are simply the ones that give like the colors for the for the chart why won't i scroll okay there we go so it's the one that gives the colors for the chart so you can change the map if you want depending on how you want your application to look like now pokemon data dot stats is undefined let's see let's see why is it undefined let me disable this entire thing comment it out and then comment out the bar chart as well so that we don't get an error and then let me console log the pokemon data and by the way does this need to be a client component oh yes it does because we are getting props okay i mean i think it does right i think it does let's save that let's see link is not defined I forgot to import it so right here import it from next link save that we should now have our link right there wait what uh huh so the link is you know this shouldn't even be here this shouldn't be on the chart that shouldn't be on the chat it should be on our original pokemon page hmm. but that means we're going to have to refactor it just a bit so cut this out place it inside a fragment place it inside a fragment like so so that now the button is going to appear here so link it oh my god why am i forgetting to import it import it so now the link is there probably not the best place i didn't want to place it inside this div because the div is displayed as a grid so it's going to make this act as another grid as you can see right there i didn't want this to happen so what i can do is just grab this and place it inside the article so that it just comes on top of the okay yeah okay 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 so we can go back we can go forth and we can display that but the stats are not displaying as they should hmm. i do realize that sometimes it would be better if i build these applications out beforehand but i don't like doing that <laughs> i like building them out like in real time so that you see that it's not always sunshine and rainbows and not for the for the for the label here we can actually display the name of the pokemon so add in our curly brackets here and then we can say pokemon data dot name that should display the name oh i've disabled the chat disable the chat okay okay wait a minute wait a minute so 
if this is enabled and I reload, then okay, I thought we were not getting an error. But this is this is a bit weird. I mean, you know what? We can add a check here. We can add a check here and say that when Pokemon data is true, that's when you want this to display so that when you get to the chart, then it's no, it is evaluating this as true already. So reload that, hopefully. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just figure out how this is working. Let me figure, oh, I was console logging that. I was console logging it to check what? Stats is undefined. Okay, let me disable that once again. Disable all that. Let's say console log Pokemon data. Wait, console log, yeah. console log the Pokemon data inside the chart. And we should see that. So we need the stats right there. So console log the Pokemon data that stats. And you can see we get an array which has six items inside. So Pokemon data dot starts and then console log the first one dot start dot name and we should see HP. Okay, so we are seeing HP right there. But we're getting an issue. The issue is the issue is that this is loading in before everything can evaluate. So it's showing us undefined. <laughs> so perhaps perhaps a solution would be this let's uncomment that because i know that if if i uncomment that out after this has loaded in then we're going to have the chart showing up but i don't want i mean people don't know how to do that you know uh so i should check for whether pokemon data exists so pokemon oops pokemon data it's true that's when i want this to show up so let me just go ahead and add this copy paste it here oops paste it here okay add multiple cursors paste it there and then here and here and here and here and here paste it there and then here as well and that should do it but this looks like or oh, this should be po this looks like a bit of overkill. Reload that. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? That, this is the console log. <laughs> we don't need the console log. Save that. And okay. So it's still undefined. Why? Why? Wait a minute, is it because this is an array? No, because by default you get back an object from the API. You get back an object from the API. Pokemon data is undefined. So it doesn't seem like that is the issue. It doesn't seem like that is the issue because on the home page everything is working correctly. But on the internal page, Pokemon data is undefined. Now it, it, it's not even showing me the where, where the error is occurring. But now I can remove, I can move this part, control D, control D, control D and remove that part. Because then now, hmm, let me study the API just a bit. I seem to, to be getting something wrong. I think I'm getting something wrong. So dot starts. Okay, so I have one more thing that I can try out. See how we added the check here? So instead of adding this check here, let's modify it. And then let's add it on the entire div. So this entire div, just cut it out. And then let's say that when Pokemon data, Pokemon data is true, then we want to show our div. But if it is false, then let's run out a paragraph, a, a paragraph that says loading Pokemon details. 
Okay, because that should now also check for this. <laughs> Save that. Let's see. Let's see what we have. Loading Pokemon details. Okay. Okay. Ah, that feels so nice. <laughs> Let's try another one. Loading Pokemon details. Oh my god. Ah, I'm tired. <laughs> and then see how this is also updating. It's also updating the stats correctly. One, one, two, three, four, five. What? Seems like they're supposed to be. There are six, not five. There are six. There are six. So this should go into five. So copy that down, change this into five. And then copy this down, change this into five. Because there are six of them. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't need this last one. And then we don't need this last one as well. Because they correspond to one another. So the first one is the first one. And then the second one is the second one and so on and so forth. So save that. Okay, so speed was the one missing. Now, I want this bar chart to move down just a bit. So where was my grid? My grid was here. I'm going to set that for large screens, then item center, which is going to move it down just a bit. Okay, and then I want this to push away from the back button just a bit. So I can do it on the H1. I can say margin top of eight, because uh, the H1 is going to push everything down. There we go. And then the loading part, this loading thingy, I want to give this a class name here class name and then i'm going to say text center and then margin top of eight just so that it's not here but it's there that looks much much better and of course you can get a bunch of other data from the api if you want but this will suffice for now and then i can challenge you what you can do is you can go ahead and try to create an input here because we're getting a thousand items right and you don't want to, for example, if you're looking at this one, you don't want to have to scroll a thousand items just so that you can get that particular one. So try to add a search input here, where if you type in something, then it just filters out the Pokemon that you have on the screen, and then it shows you that particular Pokemon. But with that done, let's go ahead into GitHub because we need to commit this. And okay, I've not logged into GitHub here. Let me open Brave. I think I'm logged in there so I can close all of this. I can't even close that one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've just noticed that I have not changed the title. So inside our layout, let's change this title into Pokedex. Oops. So let's change this title into Pokedex using the Poke API and Next.js 14. And then let's go ahead and copy this entire thing and paste it inside here. Save that and that should update the title. So let's go into GitHub and that is the wrong repository. I want to go into my homepage and then into the repositories and then create a new repository that is called Pokedex. Pokedex. Oh, you know what, let me say Pokedex-YT so that doesn't conflict with uh, another Pokedex, which is like from someone else's profile, or rather from the actual Pokedex GitHub page. Then create repository. And then let's copy this link. Let's control J to open up our terminal. And then let's shut this down. And then clear the terminal. And then let's begin to add all these in, which are quite a few. Close all that. And you know what? I have an extension that is called git lens, which is this one. So I can simply just add them here. So I can say something like this. I can just say plus, and then I can say create here config, config file, and then say commit. I can do that, or I can simply go ahead one by one, you know. And in case you don't have this extension, let me just do it one by one in case you don't have the extension. So git add tailwind dot config on config.js and then git add components.json because these are all um they're all what's it called shad cn files and then i can say git commit dash m and then install shad cn and then i can say git add package star and for this one i know that we installed we installed shard cn 
as well as chat.js then git add next.config.mjs so module.js git commit and i'm going to say add host name for images and then git add lib git commit dash n and i'm going to say shard cn shard cn utilities and then git add components components has chat inside so let me cd let me cd into components and then git add ui which is the ui folder so git commit dash m then i'm going to say shard cn components and git add chat js git commit dash m and i'm going to say render chat and then i want to cd out of the components folder and then cd into the app folder and then git add pokemon so pokemon which is the folder then git commit dash m i'm going to say single pokemon page and then git add globals.css and git commit dash m and i'm going to say what what was changed inside here this was shard cn changing or rather tailwind okay let me say default default classes for shard cn ui git add layout purchase git commit dash m and i'm going to say update title and description and then git add page purchase and git commit dash m and i'm going to say render home page fetch pokemon data and then git commit uh, rather what's the command um git branch git branch dash capital m main to change it into the main branch and then git uh I've forgotten these commands <laughs> git remote add origin and then paste in the link that we copied and then git push dash u origin main which is now going to push it into the main branch and there we go so that now when we reload this then we should see right there so this is our application and if you want the repository you can go into my profile and then the repository is called pokedex-yt or you can simply check in the description and so that is going to be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you liked it uh this video was requested about two years ago i remember a comment that requested to use the pokey api well at that time i didn't know how to how to use the pokey api but i've since learned it and this is the video for it so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you liked it i hope you learned something new and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not ready and i will see you in the next video bye bye